How's it going, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here for the next two hours talking pro wrestling. We've got Brian Alvarez, a figure four weekly here. We're going to try to sort out what is going on in the world of pro wrestling, and it's a uh, very, uh, what's the word, very tumultuous time, very confusing time, and there's no more answers today than there were yesterday. Uh, yesterday, uh, I guess the big thing was is what Eric Bischoff was going to say on Nitro, and he really he sounded very upset uh, when he should have been in a, in a situation where he should have been upbeat and kind of built to the idea that, uh, you know, there's going to be a really big Nitro next Monday in Panama City. They called it the season finale. There was no actual references to the fact that the show has been canceled, uh, and that WCW, in fact, has been canceled on all the Turner stations after Monday. He talked about, you know, trying to get a lot of the old guys uh, or former champions from the past back. No names were mentioned. Talked about... uh, a, a lot of championship matches, all the titles changing hands, or, or say all the titles at stake. I figured baby faces might as well go over in every match. I mean, there's no reason not to. Yeah. Um, and uh, aside aside from that, uh, very few answers. As far as anything that happened yesterday, uh, there are no new answers. Um, it's not dead as far as fusion is concerned. Uh, WWF is still in the hunt. And uh, what's ever going to happen will probably happen in the next week, two at the most, uh, probably closer to one week. And uh, a lot of people are trying to think that it's a work, and it's not. I can tell you that. And uh, I don't know what else to say. Brian, what's going on? With, what, what do you think about everything that's going on? I mean, it was a, it was a real weird phone conversation because it was like uh, he sounded so depressed, and it's like... You know, I don't know why they don't mention that, you know, no matter what happens, there's not going to be a program on TBS or TNT anymore. And the other thing that I thought was really weird is they're building towards this big nitro. And Eric comes on and he goes, all the former champions are going to be there. And, of course, Or he didn't invite them there. He didn't say they were going to be there. Yeah, he didn't invite them there and everything. And you'd assume that he would say something like, uh, because, you know, obviously everyone's going to want to see Goldberg back. And throughout the show, you know, the announcers never said, well, hey, that means that Goldberg can come back. It was like, Sting, you know, who, can, Nash, you know who that means is what they said. And it was like, well, who does that mean? I don't understand why they didn't mention it and why it's I like think, I, I think a big surprise. I think that because of the nature of the timing of everything, I think they probably haven't con- contacted people and they really don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, this whole thing went down. Friday was the day when they really made the announcement that they were canceling. You know, because originally it was going to be a shut. You know, the, the shutdown was going to happen. And, um, you know, he was going to come back. Uh, theoretically, if they got the deal in July, August, September, whenever it was, probably, probably July or August, and, you know, they would come back with all the big stars, so they were, you know, whatever. And, you know, now, when the thing happened, I'm not sure of contacting everyone, you know, I mean, I'm not sure who's done what. I mean, the number one priority had to be arranging, you know, for, for Bischoff sense anyway, and he's the head of creative is to arrange the meetings with, you know, Fox or whomever, whomever it, it will be, and to put a deal together in, like, no time flat, which is awfully difficult to do. Mm-hmm. And um, so anyway, that's the basic situation. You know, WF is two weeks out from WrestleMania. Uh, a lot of the matches were made last night. Uh, Brian, did you get the ratings? Um, I think that uh, with, with WCW basically being, you know, I mean, you know, as far as not doing it anymore, they're, from their side, it's, you know, they don't care about ratings anymore. So there's really no interest in WWF. Uh, knowing that the Monday Night War is over, I mean, I got the, the raw rating, which was a 4.6, and I didn't get anything else. Hmm, yeah, I didn't get anything. Okay. If anyone's got the, the ratings for their shows, I know XFL, the um, preliminary uh, nationals, fast nationals, was a 1.8, which is probably where it's going to wind up, and the UPN game was a 1.0, which would be a new low. Um, I didn't get the TNN game, nor do I expect to. <laughs> <laughs> you normally get enough to get those yeah. too. What? Do you normally get these from the WWF? Uh, yes. It's like the uh, XFL numbers? Yes. So it wouldn't be much of a shocker if you didn't get them today. Um, I or ever. Them today. <laughs> or, or ever. Yeah, but I mean, the, the network ratings are pretty easy to come by. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, TNN ratings, it's not like TNN is sending out press releases. You know, they haven't sent one out since the first week. Yes. So, but the TNN number theoretically should have gone up because it was the two best teams. But, you know, there's just, the league has just got no buzz whatsoever. Um, they can send out an XFL beat uh, ECW press release. <laughs> it doesn't even find it anymore. Well, I guess, I guess still last week's X, 
XFL game beat some of the lower rated ECW episodes, but it was well below the average for ECW. Mm-hmm. The, um, what did, uh, um, there have already been stuff in like the New York Times and LA Times in the last couple of days that, and I also read something this morning on, in, um, I'm trying to remember where, with, um, it was in one of the, uh, web things that, it, um, you know, I mean, NBC's basically given up on it for Saturday night. I mean, they haven't said it publicly, but they have, um, what is it? They, they've sent feelers out to producers to try to develop low budget shows for Saturday night because they don't expect to get ratings on Saturday night next season anyway, so they don't want to spend a lot of money to get low ratings. And um, but, but that would mean that they would be replacing the XFL. And they also sent a basic prospectus to advertisers. I think this was on Friday. They had a big meeting with advertisers. And they had something on Saturday night laid out, and it certainly was not the XFL. I think it was, um, I think it may have been movies. You know, the, what, they were, what they were trying to say is they would put movies in that time slot. So um, the XFL may air on Saturday afternoons on NBC, although I, NBC has... Uh, other sporting events on most Saturday afternoons, so I really don't see that happening. You know, um, that that would draw a bit of rating, I think, most likely. And um, um, and then uh, what is it? The uh, I was going to think about something else. The there was there was talk of CNBC carrying it, but if CNBC is the the flagship. It's dead. I just can't see a second season at all. I, I mean, seriously, I it's to the point where if they announced there was a second season, I would be totally perplexed. I wouldn't be because you're, again, we're talking about, we're talking about Vince. Yeah, but you know, Vince has got to well, sit down one of these days when, like, the financials come in. You know he's got to sit there and go, is this really worth, is my ego really worth $80 million or whatever it's going to be that he's going to lose? Yeah. Multiply by a second year. The second year where the losses are going to be, the losses will be heavier in the second year than the first. Uh-huh. Because the second year they're not going to come out with that buzz. They're not going to be selling the tickets like they did the first year. Um, so, yeah. Not going to hit that 11.9 or 11.4 or whatever it was, or 10.4. What the hell was it the first week in? 9.5. 9.5. Yeah. Not going to hit that. No, they're, you know. So, anyway, um, let's see. Uh, what did you think about let's, let's talk about Raw first, since that's the show that's going to be continuing. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Raw show? I actually thought Raw was a pretty damn good show. Um, they did the build towards WrestleMania again, and... I think, like, the, the story of the show, and there were, like, a ton of debuts, a ton of title changes, but, like, when it was all over, the one thing I remembered was Rock got booed. The people Rock wanted to see Austin booed. beat up The Rock. Rock got booed. There's another thing that was not so obvious. They had to confiscate signs all over that building. There were so many negative signs brought in um, regarding Rock one person who was there was just telling me that in his section alone, they confiscated 19 signs. He counted them. He said it was hilarious. Not all of them were negative to Rock, but uh, most of them, most of the ones they were confiscating were negative to Rock. Obviously, there was the, the Jerry Lawler signs. There was a surprising amount of pro-WCW signs that were confiscated. Hmm. Um, there were, uh, what was the other stuff I heard? A lot of stuff anti-other baby faces that was confiscated. There was some stuff with uh, lewd stuff that was confiscated, but... None of the Bob Costa stuff was confiscated. How about that? <laughs> of course not, because they didn't talk about him. <laughs> That's right. You know, um, soon, you know that they had a plan. As soon as Vince said the name or Shane said the name Bob Costas, they had to find somebody with an anti-Bob Costa sign in the crowd to uh, focus in on. And they did, sure enough. Yeah. And there were probably a ton of them. Um, there were a few. There were a few. But um, clearly coming in, they were really scared of something. And, you know, I mean, the whole idea behind this WrestleMania as was the idea one week ago, and of course these things change, was that Austin was going to go heel at WrestleMania. And, um, you know, obviously Thursday night, if you watched SmackDown on Thursday night, it was very clear that that was step one. Austin was a totally total heel in that interview, and the idea was to, you know, make it subtle but not make it overt and have the people kind of get behind Rock and Nitro or uh, Raw last night, and it did not happen. No. And, um, um, yeah, it was... It's amazing. I would not. I would not have expected it. Um, I, I don't know how to explain it. You know, people think. You know, people make. You know decisions. what? I, I can almost understand it because I mean, we've talked about this a million times before. Rock is like this baby face, but if you really break the Rock down, he's a real jerk. His character is a real jerk. That's just Austin. Although Austin's Austin, more of a yeah, but that's how he got over as a baby face was being this badass. He's not so much a jerk as he's just a badass. And you thing, know, I can see coming down to you got two guys. One the fans consider a badass, and one the fans like, but they realize that he's kind of a jerk. 
I can see it. Um, interesting. I thought what, what also was interesting was you had, um, I mean, we've already had uh, Steve Austin give The Rock a stunner twice, and both times, I mean, the place just went bonkers. The Rock gives him the rock bottom, and it's like, yay, a couple people cheered, a lot of booze, and uh, they're, I mean, I don't really understand why they would want to turn Austin heel in Texas for a run with Hunter, unless Hunter's turning babyface, but... Well, uh, obviously he is. Huh? Obviously, Hunter's... The plan, the plan, I can tell you the plan was stemming out of that match in Vegas. You know, I mean, the whole reason they booked that match in Vegas the way they did with Hunter winning two straight falls at the end was, you know, to set up the eventual Hunter babyface versus Austin heel run because it's something new because they've already done Austin babyface versus Hunter heel before and, and it ran its course. So, they, you know, and those, so, so that was well, the idea. Well, look at the pop that uh, Hunter got when he came back. Yeah. Until he started cutting his heel promo, they loved him. Yeah, but if Hunter goes against Austin, you, 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 there's no way that Hunter's going to be more popular than Rock is in a feud with Austin. Yeah. Um, unless, you know, well, I mean, the other thing is, though, if if Austin winds up with McMahon, you know, McMahon's, the, the heel heat for McMahon may carry Austin heel. Mm-hmm. Which I guess I guess is what they're probably going to end up doing. I mean, I think it's going to be hard for them to uh, get Rock to babyface in this, because, I mean, the way it was set up, I mean, you got two weeks in a row where Austin is giving the stunner to this guy, and if people really wanted to cheer him, then it's like building up the day when Rock finally hits him. And that happened Monday, and it wasn't a big deal to the people. It was like, oh, man, we want to see the stunner again. We had uh, the debut of uh, a couple of guys from ECW on television. Rhino, using the name Rhino, surprisingly not. And being a rhinoceros like he was in uh, ECW. Yeah, Rhino came in, basically the exact same ECW character, the exact same interview. We're in ECW t-shirt. Yeah, which tells me that there's uh, something going on there. Yep. Um, and Spike Dudley from ECW came out in the Dudley's corner, which, in fact, both of them led to tag team title changes because Edge and Christian with Rhino, and they actually have a, an association going back years. Um, they won over uh, the Hardys when when Rhino interfered, and then later, with Spike Dudley's interference, the Dudleys beat Edge and Christian to win the belts. So we had two title changes. I'm assuming that where they're going to go is that the Hardys are going to get a third person. Yeah. So they're, t- they're doing a, a tables, ladders, and chair match, ter- tables, ladders, and chairs match, where they have a bunch of guys who are going to go through a whole bunch of tables. Nine I, I guys. Imagine, nine guys. Can you imagine what Spike Dudley is going to do? I don't want to he, imagine that. Because, I mean, how did he get that job unless that was the purpose? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They have never hired anyone that small, except for Taka and, you know, Taka, not to get Spike, but Taka, when they hired him, was like just a totally awesome worker. Spike's a very good worker, too, but not in Taka's league. Maybe maybe today he is, but Spike not. is at least lucky that he's got that Dudley gimmick, and they have the Dudleys that are really over. I mean, when they brought in Crash Holly, he was a Holly, but who cared about Bob Holly? Yeah. So he was stuck. But um, I mean, it's not like they had two real hot, like a real hot Japanese tag team, and they brought in Taka. It was like he was the guy. So mm. I think they'll get some, you know, they'll get something out of Spike, but uh, I don't know how much. I sense very strongly. Uh, the big ECW angle coming at WrestleMania. Uh-huh. You know, where they would probably work with the mid-card guys. I mean, Rhino would not have worn an ECW t-shirt if they weren't trying to get that brand over. No. That also I mean, means he had Paul Hain with his ECW hat the first week. Yeah, but they switched, ECW to an, they switched to an ECW XFL hat. Now, on these guys. Yeah, okay, they switched to an XFL hat, but I almost think that that's part, that may be part of the angle, too, in that, obviously, Heyman would be the storyline leader of the ECW crew. Which, again, if you do that and you do the WCW thing, it it might be like two angles that are too close to each other at the same time. There's so much to think about how they're going to do this, and I I don't really know the answer. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they could do a deal where, um, I don't know if uh, Vince would go for this, but, you know, have uh, WCW and ECW, like they're going to join forces, because maybe two promotions are almost equal to the WWF, but of course not quite. Well, the one thing that the WCW... Uh, end would have is that WCW could bring in guys like a Bill Goldberg, per, perhaps a Scott Steiner, um, Hogan if the thing goes in. Uh, Hogan's I mean, that's, Hogan's a whole totally other deal. But but Bill Goldberg for sure, who can work with the top guys and should work with the top guys at least at the beginning. Whereas ECW, I mean, none of those guys really can work with the top guys. You know, you notice how small Rhino looked. Oh yeah, I was just gonna mention that. You're right. I never noticed God, he it looked, before. Yeah, he looks. I mean, so he was like small. smaller than. Uh, I mean, height wise, smaller than Christian. It looked like. I know. I told. I told you know. Is it is that whole illusion thing? And he was he was able to get over as a monster in ECW. It's all 
Size is all an illusion. Unfortunately for WCW, a lot of those guys coming in, if they do, like Chavo Guerrero, <laughs> they're going to look tiny. Yeah. You know, so th- those type of guys are Shane Helms. They did the right whatever. thing, though, last night where they had him come in and they, they had him immediately spear, of all people, Jeff Hardy, who could take a spear like very few other people in the world and uh, made it look like just a killer move. I mean, if he'd come yeah. in there and speared like, uh, I don't know. Bradshaw? Bradshaw, yeah. Yeah. He just bonked off him and fell down. <laughs> well, it's too early for that. Uh, let me see what other stuff we've got here. Um, what's your thoughts on You know, on, uh, I, I think we've mentioned this a million times that Flair really shouldn't be a heel right now, but, I mean, if they do an invasion angle and they need a mouthpiece, it almost has to be Ric Flair. Well, he's the one. He's, and they're going to be the heels, of, so. He's the face of WCW, and um, I would think if they're going to do anything with a brand name WCW, and they pro- if they buy it, they will. Um you know, I think Flair is the one who probably is locked into having a job because he's the he's the guy. And also, the other key thing is is he's that when you go to, he's a talker. And when you go to the big payoff, you know, with the presidents of the company, whether it's, whether it's Vince or Shane, going in a single match with Ric Flair, it will be a three star match. <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> and and I don't know, Vince has had too many of those in his life. <laughs> he certainly didn't with Hunter. That match was horrible. Remember that one? Oh, my God, yes. That ma- the match that never ended? Wasn't that on the same show that was like uh, Big Show versus Boss Man? Yeah, that one was like kept really short so Vince and Hunter could go for like 30 that minutes. That is one for the books as far as... Uh, that was not one of the better shows. Interviews. Yeah, that was... Um, let me check out here. Uh, let's see, what else? They had a test in Eddie Guerrero for the pay-per-view. Vince again, Shane in a street fight with Linda in the corner. Linda's coming out of the wheelchair, huh? Uh-huh. I got a feeling Foley may show up in that one as well. And uh, what are the matches today? I, I was not petrified. I was absolutely petrified when they were doing that uh, segment because I thought for sure. I mean, I don't want to really see Shane versus Vince, but I thought for sure they were going to put Stephanie and Trish in there. And, uh, wow. That would have been it, horrible. Yeah. I mean, they got lucky once, but uh, they tried again the next night, and they didn't get lucky a second time. And I don't think it's going to happen at WrestleMania with uh, Vince and Shane. And you know, another thing I know is, too, remember I told you I watched that uh, Kurt Angle video? There's, like, you know, obviously a ton of stuff from this summer with uh, Kurt, Hunter, and Stephanie. And uh, Stephanie has dropped a ton of weight. Mm-hmm. It was real yeah, noticeable last night. You know what's funny about that is, is, is you're, when you bring it up, I, I can see it completely. But when it's week by week, you don't notice it. Yeah, well. you don't notice it. I didn't notice yeah. it until I watched that uh, Kurt Angle video. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see what other stuff did they do on the show. The main event was uh, was a uh, Regal Benoit Angle against Jericho and Rock. They really didn't do as much with Benoit Angle as I expected. Although they did set the stage for for the for an eventual turn, which may happen as early as tonight in Providence. Yeah, I think they'll probably team again and do it. I mean, I thought that's what the finish was going to be last night was uh, you know Benoit screwing Angle or something like that. Another good main event. You know, WF's got a string of good TV main events. They got a some awesome guys on top. Yeah, look at that. Regal, Regal looked really good last what night. What a team you know, of that. Regal, Benoit, and uh, Kurt Angle beating on Chris Jericho. Yeah. I could have watched that for like a thousand years. Nothing against Chris Jericho, but I think I really could have. Um, I thought that Benoit was just tremendous in there yeah. last night. Just rifling those chops. Angles, you know, of course, Angles always great. Regal, Regal works in with the style. Rock with the comebacks. You know, um, very, very good main event. Uh, yeah, good show. On the ratings, now they got the ratings in front of me. It was a 4-6, which is on the low end for them. In fact, it would be their uh, second. Second lowest. Well, January 1st, I guess a ho- that's a holiday night, so we can throw that out. So it would be their second lowest, except for the holiday nights, uh, to the show on the 5th, uh, ever on uh, TNN. And uh, the main event was a 5-1, which would be the second lowest main event, except for the holiday weeks, also to the show two weeks ago. Hmm. Uh, low ma- low rated main event. The peak rating, which was five two, uh, was for um, the Hunter and Test match. And actually, let me see the uh, the main event was actually the third highest rated match because the second highest rated match was uh, the Ivory. It's not even a match. It was the Ivory in China. The Ivory interview when she beat <laughs> up China. That was that took forever. That yeah. was the point part of the story I didn't really like. That cut up. Well, maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. Better than the real China. Yeah, maybe that's why they lost. Uh, what was it half a million viewers right after that segment? Right before the Dudley's match. <laughs> Who knows? 
That's going to raise a lot of viewers, let me tell you. Uh, let's see. Um, how would you rate the decision to cancel wrestling on the Turner Networks? 21% believe it's the biggest story in the history of wrestling. I don't know if I'd go that far. 19 more percent said it was the biggest story of the last 30 years. Uh, you know, I guess we could look back in hindsight. That one's a possibility. 52% said one of the biggest stories of all time, and 9% said not among the biggest stories of all time. So, 91% thought it was one of the biggest stories in the history of the business. Just happened on Friday, and uh, I'm still, still sort of reeling from it. Uh, Nitro, what do you think? I didn't even uh, do a grade on the show for the website because I didn't really see a point to it. I mean, all I can really do right now is start some angles for next week, wrap them all up next week, and that's that. I was disappointed that uh, one of the matches set up next week was Sean Stasiak and Bam Bam Bigelow, but whatever. That was so weird. When 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 um, Bigelow got that pin, weren't you like just like stunned? I mean, I was happy. I mean, I, I wasn't happy or sad. It was just sort of like, it was like a minute and a half into the match. He does his finish. One, two. I'm going like, okay, Stacey's interfering. And he just, three. I'm going yeah. like, what the, what's this? And I mean, I understand why they did it, but, <laughs> you know, certainly didn't expect it. I mean, it's almost uh, like, um, you know, it's kind of like they're doing indie show booking right now. It's like, okay, one guy wins, set up a stipulation match for next week, and end it. Yeah. I mean, the one thing I couldn't even believe is, um, I mean, they did the main angle on the show with... Rick Flair, Jarrett, Dusty, and Dustin. And it was like somebody backstage on the booking committee thought, you know, we've been talking about Dusty's white ass for so long. Let's get an actual donkey. And everyone laughed and went, hey, that's a great idea. And they did it. And unfortunately, every single one of those fans wanted Dusty Rhodes, as old as he is, to pull his pants down and put his ass in Ric Flair's face. And they didn't deliver. Of course, deliver. After, tw- after 30 years. Yeah. Remember, it's been 25 years. And they didn't deliver because they thought that it'd be pretty cute to uh, use the animal ass as opposed to uh, Dusty's. So, whatever. I mean, what can you say? Well, you know, it, it, you know it's, it, it's, it's funny because it kind of doesn't matter. I don't think there was anything... Um, there was nothing really that good on the show last night. You know, I, it was just kind of show... From what I understand, Thunder, which airs tomorrow night, the final episode of Thunder tomorrow night, uh, is, has some pretty decent stuff. Um, Jason Jett, but I had Jason Jett now. Now, he looked pretty good last night. Mm-hmm. Um, and Jason Jett has another good match with uh, Kid Cash. And also there's a six-man tag with uh, Kid Romeo, Ilk Skipper, and uh, Chavo Guerrero Jr. losing to Rey Mysterio Jr., Billy Kidman, and Shane Helms, which I heard was a really good match. So that's good. The main event... For TV is a Scott Steiner and Jeff Jarrett winning a handicap match over Dustin Rhodes and uh, I don't know why you know what I mean? Booker T ends up making the save at the end and uh, gosh I'm trying to think what else I don't have it all in front of me but that was um I know Palumbo Palumbo beats Mike Awesome of course they're going to be doing what I'm assuming on Nitro on Monday is uh, obviously it's uh, Scott Steiner and Booker T with the uh, WCW title and US title both at stake so I assume that we end the company with Booker T holding both belts. And the racial discrimination problems then being over. <laughs> yep. <laughs> After all those years. And then um, a tag team will be Storm and Awesome challenging uh, Palumbo and O'Hare. And then, uh, what else? Cruiserweight, I'm assuming, will be Shane Helms against Travel Guerrero Jr. And Cruiserweight tag, uh, Ilk Skipper and uh, Kid Romeo against Rey Mysterio Jr. and Billy Kidman. One thing, at this, when the six-man tag was over last night, from what I understand, some of those guys were, were almost crying. Mm-hmm. So, um... It's kind of sad because, you know, I don't know. Well, it sucks know, for those you... guys in particular. Yeah, poor Romeo, you know what I mean? Maybe WF will take him, I don't know. But it's like he comes in, and, I mean, good charisma, good work. You know, I mean, he may not be like the one I said poor. I mean, who knows, you know, let's face it, Mysterio Jr., who's an awesome worker. He he may not be taken by the WWF. I can easily see that. Kidman, I think when push comes to shove, they'll take him. Uh, Mysterio, they may, they may very well take Mysterio, I don't know. Uh, Skipper, Helms, you know. Chavo. Chavo's Chavo, lucky Chavo. he's a Guerrero. They Chavo's like lucky. I, Chavo's got a lot of friends there and a lot of supporters. Um, you know, Ben Juan, all those guys really like him. Eddie's there. And the other key also is that Paul Heyman, who's never worked with Chavo, is a huge fan of Chavo. I think that Chavo will, I think that Chavo will get in. The problem when Chavo gets in, though, is that, again, it's that size thing. People are yeah, going, whoa, he's that, he's that small? Yep. You know, so... So in, in that sense, it may not be that great. 
Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other any other news that we haven't talked about. Don't forget the Hugh Morris Rick Steiner match on Thunder. Oh yeah. Oh my God, we haven't talked about Conan. What happened last night? You know, I do not know the answer to that one, but that was um very. That was Conan. a weird match. Yeah, basically Rick Steiner beat the hell out of Conan, and um. I mean, there was, like, that one spot when um, Conan put, like, those gloves in the back of his head, and he's on his face, and it was just, like, kind of like... It was like Tank Abbott with Dan, with Dan Severin in the UFC, where Tank's just kind of laying on his stomach and just going, like, I'm just going to lay here and take it because I can't get up because he'll punch me in the face. Yeah, and he did. And, I mean, but... He just kept well, right early in the match, he punched him right in the face, and then Conan's like, oh, my God. And then every time Rick Steiner tried to do a move, you could see Conan didn't want anywhere near him. And then when Conan would go to do a move, Rick Steiner would just, like, cut him off and beat him up again. Yep. Oh, my God. Remember? Oh, that was that was so brutal. That had to be the longest five minutes of Conan's life. I think that Rick Steiner... I, here's what I think, and I could be just absolutely wrong, but knowing what I've heard about Rick Steiner, I see Rick Steiner as a guy that kind of knows he ain't going to the WWF. And I also see Rick Steiner as a guy that knows that he can pummel a lot of guys. And he's got two shows left, and he's going to pummel everyone he can. Why not? Because it's not nice. It's not nice, but who cares? He doesn't care. Oh, my God. Because some of the you guys that he's just totally destroyed. You know, uh, perhaps, I mean, perhaps, uh... I mean, this you know. is a chance to uh, not have to worry about getting fired and just beat the hell out of some people for real. Why not? He knows well, no one's going to do anything. Well, maybe the deal is um, that... Uh, you know, for whatever reason, somebody somewhere had a lot of heat with Conan, and it was kind of like, you know, this is the last chance to get back at him. Yeah. Maybe it was, maybe Luger, who knows? Who knows who? Mm-hmm. You know, Conan, Conan's very um, outspoken. There's probably people who, you know, delighted in that, although God knows that was, that was an ugly scene. That was one of the worst matches I've ever seen. I mean, just, oh, God. And, and the other thing that was so weird is, didn't it look, and again, I don't know, didn't it look like in the finish that Conan thought he was going to pin um, Rick Steiner? It almost looked like they double-crossed him, like that was going to be the finish, and someone talked uh, Douglas into coming in and, you know, interfering no, no, right in front of the referee, so they called for the DQ. The Douglas interference for the pin for the pin is what I assume was the finish. Yeah. And Douglas interfered, the referee DQ'd him, Conan got up and he was mad at the referee, like he'd been Well, Conan covered him. Conan, like, covered yeah, Rick went Steiner, to... and the ref's going, it's over, dude. And yeah, it's, like, it's over. And then, and then, as Conan's got his back turned, Rick Steiner pummeled him again. Although, Rick Steiner was going to pummel him because he set up the Hugh Morris thing. But, I mean, he that first punch when Conan wasn't looking, I don't think he was ready for that at all. Mm-mm. Oh, my God. Boy. Boy, oh, boy. You know, we didn't get any emails about that. And, like, to me, now, you know. Looking back. A, wow. That was, that was quite a little deal there. Um, anyway, let's see. We'll start with some emails from Jason Sandoff, who goes... Can you please tell me the story about the Nasty Boys being up Ken Shamrock in a hotel room? Okay, this was about 11, 12 years ago. They were working for a promotion in, um, I think it was South Atlantic Pro Wrestling or North American Wrestling or whatever it was. It was uh, George Scott, maybe promotion, I think. And uh, it was Nasty Boys last night in the territory. They were going to work in Florida, I believe, afterwards. And they were doing something or harassing some girl. And Ken was trying to, Ken Shamrock was, I guess, in his own way, trying to defend the girl, and I guess did in the bar. And then uh, later that night, Ken Shamrock broke down the door of uh, Brian Nobbs' hotel room and started pounding on Brian Nobbs, and then Jerry Saganovich jumped in there and started attacking Ken from behind. I think they hit him with a was it a lamp or something like that. But mm-hmm. it was two 300-pound guys, and they beat Ken up really, really bad. Um, I mean, his face was swollen to where you wouldn't have even recognized him. I mean, he nearly died from the beating. It was that bad of a beating. And um, that's the story. And he goes, also, did Missy Hyatt sleep with Paul Barlow to get him to do a job for Taz? Uh, yes. Uh, she says so right here on the show. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Mike Harrington says, I was wondering if now that WCW is out of the picture, does that make XPW the number two federation? Oh, God, we're going to get this question every day. about Okay, some I, I, got, okay I, got a, I got a question. Why would XPW be ahead of any one of a number of other companies? Um, they, you know, I mean, on that same night, Saturday night, they ran their last show, there was another show in Los Angeles uh, by a group called, um, what was it, FMLL, the group with uh, yeah. Tonto, that, out, that outdrew them in, their, in, in Los Angeles. So why wouldn't they be the number two promotion? And that group drew over 2,000 people for its first show, I think, uh, the month before. 
So what wouldn't, why would they not be number two? I mean, number, you know, I mean, I don't even know what, what independents out there. Dude, there is what no in, number two. Yeah, what independents out there? I mean, I don't know, UFC is like out there last show. 60 weight so, high so, for number two. How about that? Um, I, I think more than anyone, UFC is number two just because they got pay-per-view and they can actually draw at the, at the show. You know, they can actually draw, you know, big houses at high ticket prices, which nobody else can do. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, they're, they're number two. You know, again, they're not making any money either. I mean, there's, some, there's no number two. That's the real answer. Uh, let's see. Also, what are your thoughts on XPW and why don't you cover them? I cover them the same as uh, every other independent. I, I, you know, you look at the, this week's Observer, and uh, they're actually right underneath the uh, FMLL. I have the FMLL ran a show on Saturday night. They do 1,200, and then XPW ran the same night. I mentioned some stuff about them. I put them right underneath because one of them drew 1,200 and one of them drew 900, so the 1,200 is ahead of 900, and they're in the exact same section, so I figured that it's covered exactly at the level it deserves. You know, why, I, I, cover every, I cover everyone who can, you know, do some business. I've covered probably every XPW show in some form. I mean, as far as it's been in the Observer or like a... Well, actually, I shouldn't say that because when, when, we, when we don't have room to cover indies, they don't make it. When we got room... And, and again... You know, and, and with all the other news stories that may not make it when, when I cut the Observer tonight. But, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's basically in the same position it would be as any, as any company that draws 900 people running monthly is going to be. So, you know, just like UPW, and, you know. UPW has more, you know, UPW at least has guys under WF developmental deals, so there's more, more to them. Or Ohio Valley, which has guys with WF developmental deals. Or Memphis, which has strong television, um, stronger television anyway. Uh, let's see. With WCW going under, don't you think Vince will now drop a, drop the pay of his wrestlers once their contracts run out? I think he'll drop the guarantees. I don't think he's going to be signing a lot of guys for half a million guarantees. But um, I think he's going to pay him based on the revenue derived minus XFL losses. Yeah. <laughs> so I think their pay is going to go down, yeah. Uh, reasoning being they'll have no place to go. Looks like the WF wins again. Uh, either way, I don't, I don't yeah. think that Vince is making like um, $300 million or whatever if he has like a hell of a year that he's going to blatantly screw his workers. He's not going to do that, but they're not going to make much. I know that... Uh, we'll make it obvious like, okay, your, your uh, downside guarantee is uh, $10,000 a year. No, no, no. It won't be like that, but I think that they'll, you know, the downsides are not going to be super high. Yeah. Um, unless you're you know, the undertaker, someone who's been around for so long that you know, it would be an insult not to give you a high downside. The, um, I was going to say, I know that, like, you know, January, which is the last month I charted, was actually the biggest month in the history of that WWF as far as revenue, um, as far as house show revenue, they were doing 400 grand a show, which is an enormous number, and the payoffs were down, which I attribute to uh, XFL. But, I mean, everyone's going, like, you know, payoffs are down, houses must be down, and I was like, and when I charted, it was like, houses are like, that. they set the record for houses, why would, it, you know, whatever. Uh, let's see. Kevin, what other TV deals are possible other than Fox? Um, I mean, just go down the list of stations, but very few of them are interested. Fox, the Fox... And just remember not. ECW, because, like, you know, Heyman, he had opportunities, but it, they weren't opportunities that would have meant anything. It's not just well, getting, it's, it's like, any it's, it's, TV it's, slot. Yeah, yeah, we'll put it this way. If you were on, let's say, Fox Sportsnet, you know, those regional Fox Sportsnet, at, at let's just say, from midnight to 12.30 a.m. or midnight to 1 a.m. on a Saturday night. Yeah, you know, Doug, maybe Bischoff can get the slot, but really, you can't build a company with that time slot on that station. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there will be, you know, Heyman, that's right, Heyman had, Heyman had one opportunity, a legitimate opportunity as far as making a TV deal, but it was a deal that ultimately it couldn't have succeeded, so why take it? Well, you might as well go to the WF. The end result's the same anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's from Albert, who goes, with the upcoming baseball strike uh, and writer strike, does this increase the value of WCW to networks that we sort of programming? It should, and if it did, they wouldn't have canceled it, so obviously TBS didn't care. Uh, who was Easy e talking about when he said any former champions come back? And um, you know, I, I think that he just said it because he won. You know, I think Sting and all those guys, he wants them there, but I don't know that, I don't know that anyone's concluded. Hopefully, though, when they, when they get guys that are going to be there, they'll let the word out because... You know, what's the point of being a surprise now? You know what I mean? Yeah. There's, there's, there's just no point. I just want to mention the Costas interview again. It made me laugh when Vince said the Trish segment was taken out of context. If they would have shown the entire Vince and Trish soap opera, it would have been far more offensive. I know. Isn't that hilarious? I, I think, you know, one of the things that I, I can't remember, I think I got an email from someone saying, 
I couldn't believe what they did because they aired her walking around on her hands and knees and barking, and then they spliced in a clip from SmackDown of her saying, you don't know how far I degrade myself. And this person's going, I can't believe they spliced these two together to make them like one show. And I'm you thinking, know how far she I said the myself. same thing on both shows. Yeah, she, she said that on the wrong. They didn't splice yeah, anything. Yeah, they didn't do any splicing. And even if they did, who cares? It happened. Yeah. It's not like they had an actress come in and, you know, do a voiceover of something Trish didn't say. She said what she said, and she did what she did, so that's that. I want to make mention one thing real quick, which we, which we haven't talked about, is uh, today New Japan ran a show in Tokyo, and Antonio Noki came out. He did not address the Tyson thing, as far as I know, which everyone thought he would. But they pretty much have changed the uh, lineup for the Osaka Dome. It's going to be Shinya Hashimoto against Manabu Nakanishi. Um, and I don't know where Yuji Nagata now fits in because he was going to face Nakanishi, and they're going to make that announcement probably tomorrow officially. But they ran the angle where Hashimoto said he wanted to wrestle on the show, and Nakanishi came out. Um, they're just desperate, I guess, to sell tickets. Um, New Japan's, God, you know, we've seen like all of these companies, you know, bite the dust in rapid order. And I'm not saying New Japan's about to bite the dust, but New Japan is on the road to where WC... You know, it's like where WCW was a couple of years ago, where you can see they're on the road down. It's really sad. Uh, that one's really sad, too. And All Japan had already happened to. Nitro did 2.1 rating uh, last night on hours of 2.4 and 1.9. So it's... Uh, yeah, so that's basically about where it's been uh, as far as other ratings. Uh, actually, I got some of those... Um, Nothing. Uh, I know Heat was up to a 2.2. Livewire did a 1.1. Superstars did an 0.9. So that's that's the scoop there. The main event on Nitro, or the Flair Dusty thing did a 1.9. Very sad that Flair and Dusty did a 1.9. Um, although I guess it's better than uh, Storm and Awesome and O'Hare and Palumbo who did a 1.5. No uh, way. 1.5? Yeah. Wow. I didn't think that match was bad at all. You know what? I, I read your report on that. I thought that when O'Hare was in there with Awesome, it was horrible, but I thought that the finish was pretty good. I thought the last couple of... like it, it, I thought it started out okay, got horrible in the middle, and was pretty good at the end. Huh. Uh, let's see. It's from Chris in Minnesota who says, uh, uh, I hate the Rock character, but most people don't, so why did they turn on him so hard? I, I don't know. Maybe uh, most people do. Yeah. How can McMahon preach to Costas about freedom of speech and then confiscate signs he doesn't like? Did he preach about freedom of speech? I don't I mean, remember him to turn the channel. I mean, but, I mean, as far as, like, when you preach about freedom of expression and then confiscate signs, there is some hypocrisy there. But, okay, there's, there's two types of... Vince McMahon I, exhibiting hypocrisy should not come as a shock to absolutely anybody in this listening audience. At any time, and reversing a position, he could say, like, hey, one week Jesse Ventura was the, the greatest thing in, in television... You know, I mean, you know, you know, much better than Dennis Miller, and he was the next Howard Cosell, and a week later he wanted to fire him. Yeah. So, you know, or, or remember that one day when uh, Je- Vince's big thing about football on TV is you don't want to hear women's voices, and the next day he hires two women to do the show, and he, and he ends up firing both of them after the first show. So it's just like, hey, you know, it's, um, okay, it's almost like Eric, you know what I mean? Yeah. Making decision and changing his mind. It's, what can you say? Ah, uh, let's see. But as far as... As far as the confiscation of signs, there's two different things. There's, I got no problem with them confiscating lewd signs. In fact, they, it's kind of like they have to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, if they want to come, you know, if they want to confiscate signs like anti-rock. Um, you know, that kind of goes against the whole grain of wanting wanting people to bring signs. It's like we want you to bring signs, but that one I don't like because like we want you to bring signs. It's like if you don't let people bring signs for whatever reason, that's cool. But if you got them to bring signs, and you don't want to hear what they have to say, why are you ask them to bring signs? Yeah. Uh, on WCW's Night of Champions, are they going to bring back David Arquette, Judy Bagwell, and everyone to remind them how stupid they were to put belts on these people? Uh, that's from Mark. Goes, you know, Chris, you uh, Chris Najdek, um emailed me last night before I'd watched Nitro, and he wrote, Were you surprised as I was when Dusty Rhodes came out with Vince Russo at the end of the show? Because he was referring to the ass. <laughs> and I almost had a heart attack right here sitting at the computer screen going, oh, my God, they brought back Vince Russo. I, I, was, I was, like, panicking throughout this entire show. And it was like, you know, part of me wanted to just go on the Internet and get the results. And then part of me was just like, I had this desire to just die in front of the TV when Vince Russo appeared. And I was so happy when he wasn't there. 
Let's see. It's too bad Turner Time Warner couldn't get this much publicity over WCW. Before it was a lame duck company, I've seen news stories all over the place about WCW, and I just went to a store wearing a wrestling T-shirt, and the cashier made a point to mention that seeing this, about seeing the story about WCW on the news. No one would have ever mentioned WCW out of the blue like that. On an unrelated note, I actually like the XFL games I saw this weekend. I like seeing football during the NFL offseason. If anyone other than McMahon were in charge of it, I think we would get a more positive spin in the media. Um, no, those ratings could not get a positive spin and in the media. And even if it did, who cares? Right. Well, it, yeah. positive media spin is not going to keep a rating at a nine four. Yeah, no, but the, it's but a the football thing, game. Yeah, but the whole thing is is that like there is no league that is going to drop in ratings from nine point five to one point eight in seven weeks and get a positive spin. There yeah. is no, it can't be done. Okay, uh, it's just Vince getting back what he's deserved after all these years. His thumbing his nose at the mainstream is caught up to him. It appears it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Uh, let's see. Uh, was Spike Dudley a surprise to you? A uh, little bit, but I know um, the guys that Heyman was trying to push for, and, and he was really high on that list, so I wasn't totally shocked. Uh, obviously, Heyman's got a lot of influence. If it was not for Heyman, he wouldn't be in, because that's not exactly the size of guys that, that they're looking for. So, I mean, that was a favor to Heyman, I'm sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, what wrestlers do you think Vince will pick up, because he won't take the whole roster? Do you think we can mention some names? I'm going to go through in this week's Observer. I'm going to go through all the names, but let's go through these real quick. Goldberg, I think he'll take. Sting, I'll talk more about that. Sting's a question mark. Booker T, I think he'll take. Scott Steiner, I think he'll take. Not for sure. Page, I think he'll take a chance with Page. But there's the age thing doesn't look good, but I think they will just because he works hard. Buck Bagwell, I would say no. Nash, I'll say yes, but they will regret it. So that's, that's, that's the answers. Uh, let's see. What else have we got here? Uh, what are the chances of WWE bringing Ric Flair or Arn Anderson to do color on SmackDown? Interesting question. I would give Arn Anderson a try. I think he might be better than Taz. Flair, I don't think, would be that good. I think that Flair would be better in a different role. Uh, will Savage? I just mentioned a whole bunch of names beyond Nitro. I don't know. I don't know anyone new. I probably will know. Uh, this is to say, Hulk Hogan has never put anyone over as ridiculous. What about Flair? <laughs> yeah, what about Flair? What about Flair? putting anyone over? What a stupid question. Uh, let me see. Um, okay. Uh, the perfect way to bring Flair in is Linda's new boyfriend. Eh, oh, well. Was Billy Kidman hurt last night after that finish? Oh, that was a finish, wasn't it? He oh, wrestled yeah. later, though. He worked under, so he couldn't be that. That was scary, yeah. though. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Let's start with phone calls. We're going to start with Terry. Terry, what's up? Hello, how you doing, Dave? I'm doing fine. Okay, yes, um, I got a um, question. Okay, you thought those too many eagles with the WCW stable, like putting um, like two or three world champions in one stable. What do you mean? Uh, what do you mean? Like um, putting um, Kevin Nash, like two, um, like about three um, main eventers in one stable, like um, the Magnificent Seven, like they got right now in the um, band and the uh, NWO. Because WWF uh-huh. don't put all them heavyweights in one stable like that. I don't think they need to. I think that they want the top guys not to be in a stable. I think the whole thing is the top guys shouldn't be in a stable. There should be individuals. Yeah, because you know WCW got these top guys in stables. Like um, the band, they had Kevin Nash, um, Big Papa Pump, and Jeff Jarrett all in one stable. Yep. And like they got the, what you call it now, like they got the Magnificent Seven. Who are the top guys? They got Lex Luger. They got Lex Luger, um, Big Papa Pump, and um, Jeff Jerry. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, like the NWO, they had the same the thing. Shire, Animal, too. there's a bunch of them. Cause the they, NWO's always done stable, so. Yeah. Just they put too many eagles in them, basically. But in the WWF, it's like they got all the um, top stars as individuals. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's Yeah, I kind of figured it worked better if they just have the top guys as individuals, but it's kind of hard to um, let WCW know that right there. Well, I think it's a little late. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that, too. Yeah. And matter of fact, do you like the Wolfpack angle? The Wolfpack angle years ago? Sure. Yeah, because okay. I figured um, K-Dog was over, Eric Bischoff was overlooking him a lot. K-Dog was over, but he That's made... the story uh, of his career. You know, I mean... WCW. You know, yeah. They, he, whatever, there were, you know, there were people who wanted him out, he was out. It's a very political game. Yeah, cause um, he was pretty. Yeah, he was pretty much getting over, and I thought he had um, he did a lot more uh, wrestling um, back then too, like um, than he do now. 
Um, well, he didn't much have much of a chance last night, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't any there wasn't gonna be any he wasn't gonna do any wrestling holds there. Can you imagine if he tried to do one of those like um you know Mexican stretches moves? Mm-hmm. Steiner would have like oh he would have just like twisted him into a pretzel. Yep. <laughs> Dang, I can't stand Rick Steiner at all. Mm, I wouldn't even bring him back on TV, and it'd be ridiculous to team him up with Big Papa Plump all the time too. Well, I would say that you don't have to worry about that. Maybe. Unless Eric Bischoff buys the company. Then you, then you probably do. <laughs> oh, no. I don't want no Bischoff to buy no company. Well, it would be better, the best thing for wrestling if he could and he could make a go of it, but it's a lot of odds against that happening. Yeah, and Bischoff is spending too much money, too. Um, maybe. maybe. Like he's been, always been doing. Yeah, yeah he showed up for trying to bank up Ted Turner. Yeah. we got to go, Terry, okay? All right, thank you. All right, you're welcome. This is from Brian. After watching the Kurt Angle video, has Kurt gotten way bigger? I thought he looked real big last night. He uh, definitely... The one thing I noticed, though, was, like, um, earlier he wasn't as big, but he was a lot more cut. Looks like he's put on some weight, but he's bigger. Yeah. He looked pretty big. They all did last night. I think he's probably up to 14 protein shakes a day. 14 meals a day. Yeah. Did he say that? He was at 10 meals a day when he came on the show. That's right. That's from Kevin Gregg, who goes, I could be wrong, but if you ask me, it looks like they are not going to do an ECW angle. I feel the reason they had Rhino wear an ECW t-shirt was to get the fans to know who he was. My friend called after Raw ended, and he didn't know who Spike Dudley or Rhino were. You know, it's a lot of people probably didn't. Having him wear an ECW t-shirt gave him a little bit of an identity. Spike wore Dudley's outfit. Why would they need Dudley. the identity of a former ECW wrestler then? Yeah. If they were going to do an ECW angle, why wouldn't they bring the ECW guys in and pair them off with other WF superstars that could do the whole let's beat down who I'm aligned with thing, and then form an ECW stable, but I actually like what they're doing with ECW guys. It gives them more of a chance to shine rather than stick them together and be a low-card group. Well, we'll see. Uh, let's see. This is from Matt, who says, I like the idea of WCW and ECW joining forces. If the WF were to buy WCW, they would have the rights to the name NWO. Am I not correct? Yes, they would, but I just don't know why mm-hmm. they would do anything with that. That would lead to a very good angle of NWO versus WWF and ECW teaming with WCW. Um... Uh, I just don't see them doing NWO. Uh, let's see. If WCW gets sold and moves to a new channel, will this affect Nitro airing on TSN in Canada? In some form, of course, it will, because it would be a whole new deal that would have to be made. Uh, let's see. If WF buys WCW, could we actually get a big three pay-per-view, ECW versus WCW versus WWF? Uh, if they want to do that, I don't know. That, I don't know. Okay. It says, Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit, if it happens, which it will, by the way, uh, will steal the show. Do you agree? Uh, there's going to be a lot. When I look at that lineup, there's like five matches that <laughs> steal the show. Yeah, and that's one of, of a pay-per-view. That's going to be, I think it's going to be one of the best pay-per-views. Pre- to some of this stuff here. Uh, is there any possibility that McMahon would be interested in Jason Jett? I would think certainly a possibility. Uh, yeah, I think a possibility. Do you really think Rick Steiner was shooting on Conan? Shooting is not the I word. I don't know if shooting is the word, but... No, he was beating him up. Maybe not cooperating as much. And beating him up. He wasn't cooperating, but he was also beating him up. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, I think that... I think that Rock got heel heat because he was interrupting Taz's match in his hometown. No way. Uh, well, first of all, Taz doesn't live in Albany. He lives in Brooklyn. Number two, those signs they were confiscating were before that angle ever took place. <laughs> so that's, that's not the reason. Um... If they I sure did make Taz look strong for about uh, one minute, though. Yes, they did. I was surprised. How big are the chances of the WF starting a light heavyweight division with the WCW guys on a minor show like Heat? Starting it, decent. Finishing it, bad. Yeah. Uh, I know in reality there's no number two, but incredibly strange wrestling is going on the Vans oh, Warped Tour this summer, and love it or hate it, they will be the only company getting national exposure. Except for WWF, I guess. Other companies may have local TV or even draw sales, but... Incredibly Strange Wrestling is taking its show on the road in a big way. Yeah, but it's part of the stage show. It's not a wrestling thing. You know. Well, maybe Los Luchadores will be uh, the number two promotion. And they yeah, have they're on Fox show. for kids, yeah. Or Nikki. Nikki, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's obvious to me Eric's announcement is a work and something's going on. Oh, what can I say? You know, there are wrestlers still hanging on to that one. Uh, let's see. Will WF take over WCW pay-per-view events? Will we see a great WF Great American Bash and WF Halloween Havoc? Probably not. <laughs> uh, this is because I was really shocked to see how short Ryan was. He was shorter than Christian. Do you know his real height? 
I don't know, he looked, what, 5'10", maybe? Yeah. So, yeah. Also, Are we going to get the, will WWF bring back hog wild emails? <laughs> uh, now that WCW's dead, whose career can we officially call over? Rick Steiner's an obvious one. I hope Luger. Um, yeah, I could not believe last night that Lex Luger and Bagwell were back on TV. I know. I mean, I understand that, um, you know, what's the point of firing and there's only a week left, but come on. And then Bagwell. I don't know if Bagwell is just a hideous actor or if he was going out of his way to be hideous last night, but um, that was so hokey. Him and Animal trying to carry on a conversation together in the backstage area. I couldn't even believe that. That was some of the worst acting I've ever seen in my life. Yes. Let's go to John in Florida. John, what's going on? Hey, Dave. How you doing? We're doing fine. Hey, listen. Do you think Eric Bischoff's announcement next week on Nitro is all we're working? He's going to say, we got the deal. We're going to Fox. If he's got the deal and they're going to Fox, yeah, he doesn't have it today. And is it true? How Somebody <laughs> told me he has no power. How is he making mashes and telling everybody to come here if he's got no power? Something's fishy there, don't it's you fake. think? It's it's fake. No, Eric Bischoff's in, in control of creative, and he's he's gets paid by the he's been paid by W uh, by Turner. He's got a contract with Turner, and this is his job, and he's doing his job. That's all. But do you think it's an angle next week? They're, next week is it. What's, what are you There's there are no more angles. It's over. It's over on that station forever. Okay, maybe not yes, for, I, I I forever. I understand that, but I'm saying the angles are just starting. I mean, they're going to continue on to Fox. If they have it signed, then maybe that's what he will announce. But if they don't have it signed, then they can't. Then they cannot that. announce that. Because and there is no deal. There is no deal today, or there was no deal as of this morning. And there may be one. I mean, I mean, things change on a moment by moment basis. There was no deal this morning. Jason Shire said when he called WCW last night, a lot of guys backstage said that's not that wasn't Eric talking. That was somebody else talking. And they believe it's all a work. <laughs> oh, brother. See ya. Well, if that's <laughs> Let's go to Bobby. Bobby, what's up? Hey, how you doing, Dave? I'm, I'm a first right. time calling. I'm pretty nervous, but I have a few questions for you. Sure. When uh, when you look at the demographics of certain audience and certain untapped market markets. There's a market that I think everybody is overlooked, and I'm not going to comment which market I think it is. Cause I don't there's, go many into markets that over, there's many markets that they're overlooking, believe me. And, believe me. And the one that they're overlooking, one of the biggest stars in, in one promotion is of a certain kind of a flavor, so to speak. That market has been untapped for so long, and that, <laughs> in my personal opinion, just my personal <laughs> opinion, I think that market... Could uh could compete with the WWF if promoted right, maybe uh, a flagship with a, with an off off brand station like WB or UPN or BET even, and I and uh and McMahon is a winner, so I think you guys should give him a little credit as being a winner. And my, oh, he's my, a winner. My, oh, my, he's a great wrestling. He's the best. We always say he's the best wrestling pro there's ever been. No question. Okay, and most, uh, most and, successful, made the most money. And uh, made the most successful innovations too. Yeah, he's a great, great promoter in wrestling. And, and Goldberg, my personal team, I'm a, I have an Atlanta, Atlanta bias. Goldberg is a superstar. He, he's a superstar person. He, he and can everything. Be a, he's a superstar. He can be a phenomenon if handled correctly. I uh, totally they, agree. They botched, they botched that up pretty bad. They had something. They really had something with him. Okay. But you know, the thing with him too is it was the way they did it was kind of a flash in the pan type of a thing. But it never should have fallen as far as it did. Also, um, you know, they. What can I say? I mean, it's, you know, but you know, I'm he, utterly he, amazed looking back that his win streak went as long as it did. That's like a miracle that that guy wasn't screwed over earlier than he was. Hey, Dave, can I make one quick comment? Yeah. Hey, uh, why don't you guys might maybe talk about the little the untapped markets, and I'm going to hang up and listen to your response. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Actually, as far as untapped markets, I think there's a lot of ethnic markets um, that WWF doesn't really go after. But I don't know. Again, you know, you, I mean, you could do. I, I wonder if an Hispanic thing, because you know, the Hispanic market's 12.5 percent of the country now, and they, if you do a different style and you don't really compete for the whole thing, but you're just competing for that market. I mean, I've seen Lucha Libre draw great crowds in certain markets. You know, certainly with, with, with you know Triple A, you know, and the shows were phenomenal and everything. So I know it can be successful, but again, you got to have super talent and super promotion and and super. T- and they didn't even have strong TV; they only had Galavision, and uh, Galavision wasn't that strong. But again, the whole thing is, the whole thing is the TV. 
you know, you need really big TV now to compete, um, and it's not that easy to come by, and there's not a lot of outlets. I mean, you got, well, you have 15 cable stations that people take seriously, and yeah. you've got to be on one of them. Yep. And, and in a good time slot, not preempted, um, with good publicity, and you've got to have some star power to get people to tune in at the beginning. And look at and Urban, where that went. just went nowhere. It went nowhere. Um, Hogan and Goldberg are the most valuable commodities out there that Vince doesn't have. And if he can get both of them, um, he can pretty well put the, I don't want to say the nail in the coffin, but really can put a number on uh, plans of Bischoff or Fusion for starting something from scratch, which I'm sure that if this thing falls through, I'm sure that Bischoff would want to start something from scratch. And the problem is, and, and I think he'd probably given enough time to get TV, provided he had Hogan and Goldberg both. But without both of them locked up, it'll be a lot harder. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go to, is it uh, Jason in Michigan? Yeah, Dave and Brian, how are you doing? Hey. We're doing really good. Um, I uh, just got a couple uh, questions and a comment. I guess I'll start off with my comment. Uh, how appropriate is it that uh, WCW's last pay-per-view was titled Greed? Uh, huh? it, it was WCW's <laughs> Greed or the wrestlers that got them to the position that they're at now. And, uh, I don't think wrestlers Greed. In, in a the... sense, they deserve to die. Uh, economically, they deserve to die. You're right, because they lost so much money. You're right, from an economic standpoint. I would say it was the greed of the wrestlers, because if I'm a wrestler, I negotiate the best deal I can negotiate. And if someone offers me a great deal, I don't say no. So I don't oh. blame the wrestlers. I do blame I do blame the management. It wasn't, it wasn't the greed of the management. It was the management being short-sighted and not recognizing that, that the seeds were sown, that the business was going to take a big fall, and then by paying those guys big contracts, they couldn't, they couldn't um, you know, generate the revenue to pay those contracts because the business fell. So that's, that's what happened to them. Yeah, I agree with that. I just, I just think that like, uh, by the older wrestlers not putting over the younger wrestlers, that's what I meant by greed, not, not necessarily the money. Okay, that's the... Uh, yeah, but right, that's also right. a management problem, too, because you know, the first time that one old guy said, I'm not putting over this young guy, he should have been canned. He and instead it was like, how, okay, how come, you don't have to put him Lug- over then. How come Luger's still out there? Yeah, look at that. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, how can you really blame Kevin Nash for what he's done when everything that he did, he was rewarded for? Okay, I can blame him for being a bad booker, though. Well, that's true. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, as far as like, as far as, as, far as like, you know, all of the stuff he did of not being a team player, if they had nipped it in the bud and said, okay, Kevin, you're not a team player, this is what you got to do, and then sent him home, it would have been a different thing, but by letting him do it, hey, he knew what the game was, and they all knew what the game was. If you're a star, you do whatever you want, and, and that's an attitude that will kill any wrestling company. It, mm-hmm. It's got to... For a wrestling company to, to, to make it, it has to be a team and not a group of individuals. And they were a group of individuals. The WF was a team. And I think that's where it turned around. Yep. Um, I have a question about um, Mike Awesome. Uh, since he left ECW um, on extremely bad terms, uh, and now that WCW is dead and Paul E is in charge, or not in charge, but has a, somewhat of a prominent position in the WWF, uh, is Mike Awesome's career over? He could probably go back to Japan. I don't think Heyman's powerful enough to keep a guy out. Uh, I mean, he uh, may, he may uh, put think, in a think, real bad I, I word think, for him and explain what happened, but if Vince think, wants somebody, I don't think there's Vince one other want, guy in the company that can keep him if, out. If Vince wants him, but for a borderline guy, Heyman can keep a guy out. Yeah. And, and Awesome may be a borderline guy. I mean, Douglas, I'll tell you what, I think that Douglas is in a lot of trouble. Um, because well, you know, we got a situation where McMahon and Heyman both don't like him, so that's not that's not good. <laughs> um, Anything else, Jason? What's that? Anything else? Yeah, I have one more question. Um, I know that uh, the Japanese uh, pro wrestling groups have been having a lot of problems in the last year, and um, I'm wondering with the market kind of um, cleaning up here in the, in the states, do you think it would be possible for a Japanese promotion to come over to the states? and offer their alternative uh, to what we get here and be profitable at the same time? Mm. Very, very difficult. I think it would have been easier years ago. Um, I think it went, when, when the, what, what people wanted out of wrestling was different. Yeah. What people wanted out of wrestling, I mean, there's, there's so much more of people wanting the soap opera and the story, whereas before what people wanted were the, the, the personalities and the action. So it would be harder. Obviously, you would... I think that coming here, a Japanese group coming here and touring, I don't see it. Now, the idea if a Japanese group had really strong television um, and excellent announcing, I mean excellent announcing, 
for a one-hour weekly show, and then maybe did some pay-per-views and, and mixed in some top American guys as a marginal pay-per-view outfit, yeah, I think they could do it. It'd be hard, but I think they could do it. Uh, but as far as going on the road in this country and touring and making money, no, I don't think so. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much, and you guys keep up the good work. Okay. Let's uh, see. We should go to Charles. In uh, Where's Charles in Connecticut? Okay, Charles, what's going on? How you doing, Dave? Doing really good. Um, I have a few questions. Um, first of all, is it a definite that um, WCW is off the Turner Networks? Yes, that's a definite. Uh, Monday's the last show. Is, is that for just for a period of time or permanently? No, no, no. It's, it's well, I, mean, I don't want to say for, forever because 10 years from now, you know, they might get a new manager who likes wrestling. But, I mean, it's not coming back in September. I mean, you know, they're... They're in the process, um, the, the uh, Turner, Turn, TBS is in the process of getting Friends and Seinfeld as primetime shows, and they just don't care about wrestling anymore. I mean, they're trying to get, like, those type of shows. I mean, like, not first run, but the reruns. I mean, to them, I mean, it's, you know, they, they can make so much more money on advertising on those shows, and there's just no slot. There's no slot. I don't say there's no slot. Jamie Kellner doesn't like it. And that's, that's the bottom line, and they're trying to bring in higher quality shows, and wrestling doesn't fit into what they want to do anymore. So and Ted Turner doesn't like, have the power. So, yeah, no, it's done. So it's going to be more than a month to shut down, at least? <laughs> I don't know. I'm almost going to scream, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's off the network because it's been canceled. And that means that uh, it's not going to be a month. It's not going to be six months. It will probably be forever. The company will either be on another network, which is a slim chance... And, and, I mean, the odds are very slim of this happening. It will either be revived on another network with new ownership uh, in a couple of months, or it will be sold to the World Wrestling Federation, and a couple of guys will go there, and the name WCW may exist for a short period of time for a WWF angle to kill it. But ultimately, at that point, you know, I mean, at that point, if it's sold to the WWF, the company is dead. Okay. Uh, I'm just curious about, uh, as far as the WWF buying it, wouldn't that um, constitute a monopoly if they bought it? Yeah, but nobody would uh, care. It, it could. You know, so, so, hey, the people who are out of business still care. Um, I mean, they're going to care, but it's not like something like the government's going to be going. My God, the global economy is going to go down if uh, Vince McMahon is a wrestling monopoly. They're going to look at it like no, I mean, interest. I mean, I, I mean, if you look at it that, that the same way, the the NFL and the NBA and Major League Baseball have basically monopolies of Major League Sports. So, um, you know. Um, I, I, I mean, there, there's, there may be people out there who may do an antitrust suit, and it's just a question: if the WWF were to to do anti-competitive things to keep people in biz, to keep people out of the business, they'd be a lot more open for that. But if they were just go in there and just go, we've got it, and and if anyone wants to open up, I mean, we're not gonna we're not gonna steal their talent at the beginning because we're you know we don't need to. I think they'll be okay as far as like that uh, antitrust. But who knows? I mean, that's I know. you know you, you, that's that's totally uncharted waters. Oh, the other thing I was thinking, because I've, I've been watching uh, um, WCW on uh, the Turner Networks basically since, like, 1987, and maybe maybe it was just because I was a little kid or my memory serves me wrong, but but before um, before Tur- I remember before Turner bought WCW and I started watching it when it was uh, still NWA, I, I started watching it. I thought it was a lot better than WWF at the time. And then after- a lot of people did. Yeah, and after, in, after in, 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 in the mid '90s, it was. I mean, in the you know '96, '97, it was better than WWF. Yeah, yeah, but and that's when I started so watching about '97. I thought at that time it was way better than WWF. Then when Turner oh, bought it, it around '89 uh, or '90, I thought it started going downhill, and it never, it never, except for some some periods, it never really recovered. Like, do you agree with that? It never really was as good as. As it was when it was with uh, Crockett, when it was with Crockett promotion. Well, Crockett's last year was a very bad year, which forced the sale to Turner, because uh, they would have gone out of business if Turner saved the company. So, you know, if it had not been for Turner, this thing would have been dead in in in, in 1988. Um, Turner did not make money on it uh, until God, like mid 90s. Um, it was real bad in 90, 93. 90, you know, that was a real bad year. 90. This, after Flair left in 91 and, and all of 92, that was a terrible... Actually, there was a little brief period in 92 that wasn't so bad with... Uh, was it Steamboat and Shane Douglas and Rick Rude on top and Sting and, and people like that? They had... Rick Rude's Sting feud was pretty good. But overall, um, yeah, it was weak. And then in 94, it started coming back. And, you know, by 90, 96, 97, 98, it was super strong. 
And then, uh, it, you know, by, by the latter stages of 98 all, and, 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 you know, part of 99, you know, most of 99 and 2000, it was a disaster area. And they killed the company. 99 and 2000 really killed the company. Yeah. What about, um, what about Ric Flair, Ric Flair as far as his, uh, his contract goes? Uh, you know, I, I don't know the situation. I just talked to him a couple of days ago. I don't know the situation, and he doesn't, he doesn't see either, so. <laughs> Are you going to have him on? You know, it's, it's having him on at any time? You know, it's, it's all a lot of people on pretty soon. It's all it's all political. Anyone who's a free agent um, that wants to do the show will be able to. Well, many of them have already contacted me. Some of them will be on very soon. And um, you know, the guys that are you know, if the thing is sold and they work for Vince, you know, Bill, whether Vince says it's okay or not, and right now Vince says it's not okay for his guys to appear on the show. Or not Vince, like, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's the company, whoever the company is. Ultimately, it's Vince, though. Yeah, you know. So, so that's the basic situation. Okay. 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 Thanks a lot. Ah, what can I say? One Why a crew of callers today? Yes. One wrestling is reporting that Scott Steiner has a pinched nerve in his left leg that has caused some loss of feeling and he may not be able to wrestle next Monday. <laughs> what, can, what can I say? Try to check on that. Uh, hey, the show. hey, it's true that his back was screwed up, but uh, it's kind of odd timing. Yeah. Isn't, isn't everything. Uh, this says, Hulk Hogan did put Ric Flair over. It was almost two years ago to the day when Hogan lost oh Ric Flair. God, he put pop- Kidman over too, but it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I remember that when, when Hulk Hogan If you beat a man 6,000 times during their career, and then you lay down them for lay down for him one time, what does that with ton- mean? With, with, with tons of interference. Yeah, does that mean he's a great and then you, man? And then, you, and then you pop up and, and okay. <laughs> Actually, I, you know, I remember the night that Flair beat Hogan for the first time. On a, it was on a Nitro. And I remember um, someone calling me from the arena like two seconds later and going, what do you think of that? And I go, you know, I never thought I would live to see that day, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> and, let's see, how did he beat him? I think he hit him with a chair and like a high-heeled shoe. <laughs> and uh, there's like a hundred men running in. And Hogan hopped right up afterwards and I think made a comeback. I don't even remember it. I just remember just that moment. And I remember that Hogan did a job for Arn Anderson, too, you know, similar, you know, somewhat similarly. Yeah, I think he did two in a row. He did, like, yeah. a job getting hit with the shoe again, and then he did the job, like, via DQ, and then he came back and just destroyed everybody. Yeah. Uh, this is from John. who goes, you guys are calling this game over too quickly. We're not calling the game over. We're giving a very accurate uh, situation as, as to where, where it stands right at this moment. The odds, um, I mean, here's what, here's what Eric Bischoff has to do. He has to both get enough financing to outbid Vince McMahon and get television within, like, Days, so the odds are against him. It's not a hundred percent, but the odds are against him. So that's that is a accurate portrayal of the situation as it was, or a, and as it is right now. Unless he's made both deals since this morning, which I would seriously doubt. He goes, "There's never been one anything in this case. WWF. There will always be a competitor in some form to grab some of the WF's ratings. There will always be other wrestling out there. No question. There's independence everywhere." As far as a serious competitor to the WWF, there is no law that says that there will always be a serious competitor to the WWF. And it's going to be very, very difficult to start from scratch against such a, a huge company. And the only way you can do it is if you have a billionaire's money behind you because you're going to be fighting a billionaire who knows the business, who has a brand name established after 17 years. It's not impossible, but what it's going to need is, I mean, you're going to need a Rupert Murdoch. You can't do, it can't be Ted Turner anymore. He doesn't have the power. So it's basically going to be someone... Uh, you know, it's, it can't be Viacom. All of the Viacom's not going to open something up against Vince. They own Vince, or he owns them. Uh, so it's, it's got to be. You know, how many media conglomerates do we really got left? I mean, it, it's not like it's not like the old days when every station had different ownership. I mean, we live in the day of conglomerates. There's only a few of them, and it's got to be one of them if they want to fight Vince. That's the reality. Um, in your opinion, why do you think all these wrestling companies are closing? If the explanation is not that the wrestling phenomenon is cooling off, it's because it's very, very difficult to make money promoting wrestling right now because the WF uh, raised, and, and, and WCW both, raised the stakes so high that unless you are, as I said, a, a billion-dollar company or a hundred, hundreds of millions-dollar company, you cannot compete. You know, Paul Heyman saw the, the writing on the wall and got out of the game of trying to compete and, and got onto the team that he thought was going to win. And when, when, Heyman, when Heyman made that call, and that was, I, wrote, I remember writing about it just a couple weeks ago, him making that call to go to WWF, was a very significant sign because if he had folded ECW and then sat for six months and the idea was wait for Eric or someone 
to get into trouble in WCW, they probably would have called him to run the creative thing, and he saw that as not a viable option, and he looks real smart right now in doing so. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me see. Uh, two XFL cheerleaders came in this morning to complain about their jobs. Um, I think this is Howard Stern. Oh, my God. So this, by the way, I've been on Howard Stern Thursday. Um, but anyway, two XFL cheerleaders came in to complain about their jobs. Howard said that Brandy had been on the show before. She works at the Hard Rock Hotel in Vegas, Howard. Asked them how they came cheerleaders to set an audition, which we know about that. Both of them have been cheerleaders in the NFL and NBA, so they had experience. They were expecting the XFL to take off, but it's, but it's flopped. They're expecting to have plot lines and scripts, but it didn't work out that way. Actually, I'm glad it didn't. Howard said he expected all that stuff, too, but, but the XFL didn't go how it expected. Howard said he wants to, have, wants to take the XFL and turn it into a reality-based TV, and he said he's going to ask Vince about it later this week. Uh, the girls said they're paid pretty well, but it's maybe hurting their careers. Um, Bonnie, one of them said that she was supposed to have a job working with Jesse Ventura, helping call the games, but it didn't work out. And thank God for that. <laughs> the girls said they've never even met any of the players. They said, How can you date them then? Howard asked them if they're disappointed. They said it's not disappointing. It's just that NBC and Vince McMahon are not on the same page as far as what they want. And of course, they're the show. Howard thinks the girls are going to be fired after this interview. <laughs> <laughs> they said they're not worried because their agents tell them that they might be hurting their careers by still doing it. Both of them have other jobs. One models for Fred Rooks of Hollywood. The other works in Vegas, the Hard Rock. Anyway, uh, that's, about, that's about it. Uh, let's see. XPW will never be number two for various reasons. Uh, I didn't even know they ran shows. Plus, it's like watching a 12-hour Best of Leatherface IWA tape. Every match has blood and gore. They only have a few guys who can work, and they don't even have TV anymore, do they? I think they still have TV. UPW, APW, ECWA, Combat Zone, Memphis Championship, OBW. Those are the biggest independent indies left. I'll tell you, I feel bad for Chris Daniels. Uh, I feel bad for many, many people. We've got a full bank of calls. I want to get back to Hey, you. I want to mention something real quick. Leatherface was backstage at uh, the last Cloverdale show that I worked at. And mm-hmm. uh, he was the last man on the planet Earth that I would have ever picked out of a lineup as the man who played Leatherface. Totally really? happy, nice. Jolly guy. It was weird. So there's your uh, cafe break of the day. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about WCW calling the show a season finale, but if you remember last year, they took a break after the spring break show. But yes, I agree, this is more severe. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. Let me just say something real quick. I know that there are a lot of you out there that are very sad that WCW is going to die, and I know that Eric Bischoff in the past has done a lot of things and done some angles and try to fool the wrestlers and a lot of people. And I also know that a lot of people are backyard wrestlers and have made tapes of some of your matches. And if you have a tape of your matches and you want to air it on TNT this Monday, you can't do it because TNT is not going to put your show on the air. And Time Warner owns TNT and TBS, and they have decided that they don't want wrestling. So they have canceled Nitro and Thunder. Those shows are not going to air, perhaps, ever again. So Probably. it's not going to be a hiatus. They're not going to be off for a couple of months. They're not going to take the break after spring break out. They're canceled, and they're done. Okay. Uh, we're going to be saying that again. Let's go to Chris in Minneapolis. Chris, what's going on? Chris. Chris not there? Let's go to Adam in New York. I think Al's not there. Oh, okay. Well, I... Okay, I'm going to keep reading, doing emails then. Have you spoken to Mike Morris recently, and what are his thoughts on the situation? No, I haven't spoken to him, but that's another one, boy. Boy, oh boy. You know, he, he, he was ready for that contract when Kevin Sullivan was booker, and then a week late, I mean, it was all signed, had the verbal deal, the contract was ready, about to be sent, and then Vince Russo came in and had no idea who he was. So he just sit for a whole long time. Finally got that tryout match on Nitro, had the best match on the show. Eric was very impressed with him, wanted to hire him. And there it is again. And Vince McMahon has never had any interest in him. So he's probably not a happy camper right now. Uh, let's, let's see if we can get Chris up, Chris up now. Hey, Dave, what's going on? Not too much. What's going on? Not too bad. Just wanted to say a long-time listener, first-time caller. And I was pondering through a lot of things, and I know you've been answering a lot of the same questions over and over again, so I'll try and keep this one as short as possible. But what I was wondering about is I was thinking, do you think that this whole situation with WCW and the loss of $80 million and all that kind of stuff could have been stemmed back to them removing Eric Bischoff in August of 1999 and then just leading to a scale of there never being someone in charge for over a year and a half 
and Russo going nuts and doing all this crap and stuff? It was already on the verge. The real... Okay, there were different stages of the collapse. Stage one of the collapse was when Bischoff made Kevin Nash Booker. That was a really terrible time, and Bischoff was in control. And if, if you look at the way the ratings plunged, they plunged really bad. Then stage two, which was not a big ratings drop period, but it was um, it was a pretty big negative period, was the uh, the Russo reign. Um, in fact, it, when it comes to like buy rates and, and, and killing... The aspect of wrestling that makes people buy tickets to matches because the live attendance went down because he didn't book for the house shows. He booked everything for ratings, and the ratings still dropped as well. Mm-hmm. So that was a bad that was a bad situation because it was sort of foundation crumbling. And the Sullivan regime came in, and it was just too boring, and all the guys, so many guys decided to get injured because they didn't like Sullivan and wanted him to fail. You had the whole crew wanting this guy to fail, which, in fact, he did badly. So then they made the big mistake of bringing Bischoff and Russo back, those two could never get along. That was a total disaster, and that's what killed the company. <laughs> I mean, looking back, like, when Bischoff was first taken out of power, I mean, at the time, it was the right, was the right thing to do, but unfortunately, what happened after that was worse. Yeah, because they never ended up finding someone to take that, take that, you know, that, that conch, for lack of a better word, uh, and, and really take power in WCW. Cause well, it was well either... that's what R- Russo did, but Russo, Russo didn't get it. I mean, that was the problem. I mean, Russo was there, he had the power, but Russo... He just didn't have, he didn't have it. I mean, and, and he didn't understand what people wanted out of wrestling. In fact, he was like probably 180 degrees wrong on most. Oh, of I agree things. with you. I agree with you totally on that one. I mean, a lot of those those silly angles. I mean, it was just like, especially his second run of disaster. You could really see that. You know, they were they were starting with the New Blood storyline, and then then some people didn't want to play along with that. So then he took time off, and then he kept coming back and taking time off, and coming back and taking time off. And then, you know, the creative flux up and down, and then they'd try and patch things up for about three weeks, and then he'd come back and screw it all up again. Yeah. Am I making sense on that? Uh, that's, that's a lot of what happened. You know, and, uh, and by the end with Russo, I mean, it was clearly he was booking for his own entertainment, and you can never have that, you know, because then you're, you're doomed, especially when you've got a guy whose version of entertainment is different than the Everybody vast else. majority of the people watching. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would go to a lot of indie shows here in Minneapolis, and I was talking to Lenny Lane at one of them about Russo, and, you know, he said Russo would call and say, oh, I got this great idea, I got this great idea, and then the joke wouldn't be funny to anybody but him. Let's use, was it Clorox? Remember that one? Yep. Yep, let's have, uh, was it Scott Steiner drink Clorox? Yeah, they were going to, yeah. you don't bleach your beer with Clorox. What would you bleach it with? I don't know, bleach? <laughs> Bleach. Huh. Let's have him drink bleach. <laughs> well, Dave, I suppose you have a full bank of calls still. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Enjoy your program. Try to listen to it as much as I can throughout the week. So you know, keep doing up a good job, you and Brian, and uh, I look forward to talking to you again some other time. Okay, thanks very much for calling. Let's go to Adam in New York. Adam, what's going on? Geez, a few minutes ago you made me talking to my phone like I was a weirdo. Um, <laughs> let's see, I wonder if that pinch nerd may have made uh, Scott Steiner lose his smile. Sounds like it's me. <laughs> but, you know. Interesting, uh, interesting timing. What is that? Uh, who do you think they're going to program um, Shawn Michaels when he comes back? Because to me, it kind of seems like they're going to throw X-Pac out there considering the whole promo he cut on Sunday Night Heat. Because he was like, oh, I'm the reason DX was successful. It was all my attitude. Yeah, uh, I can see that. I can see that. I, you know, I, 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 I don't know. Not. I know that... Yeah, I, I know that... Um, I expect him at WrestleMania in some form. And it's definitely not wrestling because it would have been announced already, mm-hmm. and probably wrestling at the uh, you know the Backlash pay per view. Yeah. That's how I expect it to go down. You know. Oh, and uh, earlier you mentioned there was some reason why Vince wouldn't take Sting. Why not? I, I didn't say so much. Vince wouldn't take. I mean, he may and he may not. Um, yeah. I mean, very very high salary. Doesn't like to go on the road. Doesn't like uh, to work. Doesn't like to work hard. So there's a lot of reasons there. Plus. Sting may not want to go to work for Vince as well. Sting has money. Sting has uh, strong religious convictions and, and has told a lot of people that he would not want to work for Vince McMahon. Of course, saying that when you don't think it will ever happen and actually when, when it's your only alternative are two entirely different things, so that may change. True. And one last thing. Uh, what is it? With, with them maybe you know bringing in Nash and you got Shawn Michaels coming back and you got Triple H and you got X-Pac and you got just incredible seems quite a bit like a group of guys who had a whole bunch of power before. You think they'll be able to have anything like that again? 
They'll try. I think they'll fail this time because Vince doesn't need any of them, whereas before Vince was scared to death of losing them. Yeah, well, he needs Hunter. He doesn't need Hunter. Losing Hunter would be a blow. He doesn't need anyone. He lost Austin for a year and didn't True. miss a beat. So he doesn't need Hunter, and he certainly doesn't need the rest of them. And, and I think Sean, if anyone, has figured that one out because Sean's been you know, pretty much begging to come back for months, and they just, well, when we're ready for you, you know, we'll bring you back. I mean, they've really made him... They've really made him eat it, you know, I and mean, for a guy who, you know, was such a valuable part of the company and such a superstar in this business, you know, saying, hey, I'm ready to come back. It's me, Shawn Michaels, the greatest worker of all time. Uh, you know, and then they just don't call him back. Yeah. And a couple weeks later, they call him back. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, you know uh, we can come up with a good idea for you. Yeah, we, we can, we'll consider it. You right. know what I mean? So, you know, that, that's, that's the power that, that McMahon and, and company have right now because they know there's no competition, and they've got a great, great crew, and there's, they don't need anyone. All right, Brian, I uh, got my first issue of Figure Four this weekend, and you are frighteningly funny. Keep oh, up the good you. work. See ya. Frighteningly. I, hope you I agree. Get it today. Yeah, I got it today as well, and uh, it was. I love reading the TV reviews. They're far more entertaining than, than watching the TV. Far more. Let's go to Steve in New York. Steve, what's going on? Hey, Dave. Hey, Brian. Hey. Um, I just want to start off the phone call by saying I know it's over. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, assuming that AOL and Time Warner um, keep the top ten contracts in case they ever want to sell them off in the future, um, how many guys with the 90-day release clauses are going to be free agents in two weeks? Well, or uh, they're gonna, 90 days. It, dep- it, 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 it just all depends on the nature of the, the buy of Vince or the buy from Fusion. If, it, if it's a Fusion buy, I think the Fusion will... Um, what Fusion would probably do is cut everyone after the 90 days and then try to re-sign them for like, you know... Hundred thousand dollar a year deals. Okay. Um, if it's Vince, uh, I think that they'll cut all those guys, and Vince will sign the ones he wants, and not sign the ones he doesn't want. Again, we don't know. There's two different schools of thought from the Vince camp. You know, I mean, the one school of thought is that they will try to get television themselves on a Viacom station and run it as a separate entity for a long time and rebuild it, and then do the promotion versus promotion thing when it when the company's rebuilt and it can mean something, or they'll just take you know like the guys they want to take. And, um, and, you know, and, and, and just bring them in sort of like they're doing with the ECW guys. And, and both have been discussed. I don't think either. I don't, I, I'm pretty sure that neither decision is final. I'm, I'm relatively sure of that. I, I know that uh, someone just sent me an email saying that it's been reported that they will run it as a separate entity. And that may, you know, I, I don't think that that's locked in stone by any means. So anyway. Um, well, assuming the company folds, how much talent are we looking on the market? Uh, the, the one, uh, well, I mean... It's not going to fold. It's going to be sold. Okay. It will guaranteed be sold. It will be sold either Fusion or to uh, or to Vince, and most likely Vince. But uh, it'll you know it'll be sold. For I think the question is going to be how many names that are worth anything are going to be available. Well, I mean, there's going to be you know I would the ones that Vince doesn't want. Anyone Vince doesn't yeah. want will become available. What's I don't the value going to be for those people that Vince McMahon doesn't want? Yeah. Actually, I think that um I think that there's more people that are worth that are worth things than you guys are giving credit for. Um, I think one of the biggest problems that WWF has right now is the fact that um, we've seen all these matches a hundred times before, i.e. the Hardys versus Edge and Christian. Mm-hmm. Um, remember, how, look how that hurt ECW. I mean, how many times do we see um, Super Crazy versus Jury on TNN? You know what, though? I never got tired of that one. Oh, I never got tired of that one either. That was one of my favorite. <laughs> that was a good one. But, yeah, you know, just in general. Those, those matches. I mean, okay, how about this better one? New Jack and the Baldies. <laughs> but I never liked that in the beginning. Yeah, I never liked that in the Man, how many times have we seen uh, Ben Juan Guerrero? And how many yeah. times have we seen uh, Hulk Hogan and uh, John Tenta? No offense to John Tenta, but it's two totally different matches. I just think that even if they pick up a bunch of guys and, you know, build them up to be jobbers to the stars, like, say, a Raven, they at least can, it at least can give a little more variety to the shows at this point. And, um... <laughs> oh, this is a pretty good one. Um, this is, I gotta read you this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just saw this thing. He goes, I just want to say that this whole shutdown is such an obvious work, just like Montreal, the steroid trial, and the World Series, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. Um, sorry, a sorry. caller earlier mentioned, um, the ethnic markets not being, um, not being tapped. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. I think that's a good idea. It's just that when he mentioned it, I got this horrible flashback of the first three weeks of Latino Heat. <laughs> Why not? You know, I never, is, is that, is, which, now, which show was that? Was that WWF show or WCW? I was, uh, that was WWF with Eddie Guerrero. 
The character. Oh, 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 oh it's just scary. I thought you meant like, um, because WF, WF has done television for the Spanish market. Super. I mean, I used to watch Super Astros every week because they had, they had really good matches. And they did great ratings with it, but they, they didn't really know how to do it and only lasted one year because it was yeah. like the mentality of the people in WF. I would talk to them about it and they would, you know, like, uh, you know, like about Super Astros and you could just tell it was like they didn't, they didn't understand what the guys were doing. The crowd that was there, you know, never saw them on Raw, so therefore when, like, Santo or somebody would come out, they wouldn't know who he was, and it just it just didn't work. Was that taped ex- at WWF Raw? Yeah, they used to tape Super Astros at uh, the Raw or the Smack... I, I guess oh, like that? Yeah. It was before SmackDown. Uh, um, do you think all these wrestlers um, who don't believe that it's over, they're just um, so jaded by things like the sale is going to be finished this week or Paul is getting TV... Do you think that they just can't believe anything at this they've point? They've been fooled by uh, Bischoff so many times. They're so that used they're to just that. begging. They're, they're begging to be fooled again. The thing with the, the, but, but I mean, you know, you've seen interviews even this week with ECW guys going, well, you know, Paul's going to bring this thing back, and oh, it's God. just like, it's just like, you it's know, it's, it's really over. I mean, he's he's on New York's TV. <laughs> you know, he's wearing an XFL hat. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, I I expect I expect a, an ECW invasion angle coming out of WrestleMania. I expect it to happen. But that doesn't mean like Balls Mahoney and those guys are going to be, you know, working in the WWF because I don't think they are. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think they are either. Well, that's all I got. I'm going to listen to myself on the delay. Bye. Uh, okay. Let's go to Eric. Eric, what's up? Hey, guys. Hey. Hey. I was uh, visiting John McAdams' website, and uh, I called up this um, section on it, the 10 greatest U.S. matches of the 80s and 90s. And uh, he had some really interesting choices, and I was wondering with uh, with both of you what your what your top choice for the U.S. of the 80s and 90s would be. Oh, God. I mean, there's, like, so many of them. I mean, there's some of those... The, the, a lot of people will always point to the, the Flair Steamboat, um, you know, from, from 89 in New Orleans. I mean, right. that was a, you know, really awesome match. Flair, Kerry Von Eric from Dallas, like, Christmas of 82. Bret Hart, Steve Austin from... Uh, WrestleMania in, I think, 97. Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon ladder match. I mean, there's just so many. I would hate to pick one. Right, good point. Yeah, he definitely has those on here. One match I was uh, particularly interested in from the 90s with that I haven't seen. I've seen just about all the other ones, but was uh, Cactus Jack versus Eddie Gilbert from uh, Philadelphia oh, the free, in 91. The free thing? That, for its time, but, you know, that stuff, a lot of that stuff would not be... Um, it's not going to hold up as well because it was the beginnings of hardcore and a lot of that stuff was new. And a lot of that stuff is now commonplace now. Right. Although, you know, I guess getting your head wrapped in barbed wire, um, that's still pretty unique, that isn't won't it? grow old. Yeah. All right. Well, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I think you guys are doing a great job on the show, and I'll uh, keep it short so you guys can finish up. Thanks a lot. Okay. Because what was the first and last WCW pay-per-view that made a profit? The early ones did. I think they were probably making profits on pay-per-view until, you know, the last year. Um, I don't, you know, again, I don't know what break-even is. Their buy rates have been horrible. For just about 15 months, 16 months, during uh, it was it was um, the last decent buy rate I believe would have been Hogan and Flair. Well, oh, that's the last big buy rate was Hogan and Flair, which would have been February and March of '99. But they were still doing what I would call decent buy rates. Uh, Halloween Havoc of '99 did a good buy rate. I think the World War III was down a little bit. Starcade was very was was somewhat weak. So it's like that. The, begin, the Russo period was where the buy rates really started nosediving. Then when Sullivan took over, so nobody was buying the pay per views. What would you so call it decent? It, you know, like point three, point four. You know, it looks I, I like maybe, uh, Mayhem in '99 did a point four five, and they were down in the twos after that. Yeah, so point four five is still not. Now that was the finals of the World Title Tournament with Bret Hart and Chris Benoit, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was that was whatever. Uh, let's see. He goes, don't worry, Dave. A lot of people understand that WCW is just about gone. Do you think if Scott can't work Monday, they'll put the belt on Flair? No, they won't. Let's go to John in Atlanta. John, what's going on? Donnie, is it in Atlanta? Yeah, how's it going, guys? Hey. Hey, it's going pretty good. Uh, I had a question. I had read a rumor that was going around, and I can't find anybody that, uh, anybody else that was reputable to, to confirm it or anything, but that... Jerry Jarrett had actually joined in with Fusion to try to, to make the deal for WCW. Have you guys heard no. anything about that? No, no, no. Okay. And also, as far as uh, the guys that Vince is going to pick up, um, you know, just because Vince picks them up doesn't mean they're going to be very cooperative. I mean, how quick do you think Goldberg's going to walk out when he walks into Raw and he's told that he's got a job to uh, Chris Jericho one night? Yeah, well, no other this option. Is smart. 
if Vince is smart, yeah, there's so many questions on that. Because one, if Vince is smart, he won't suggest that because it's stupid. Number two is, if he does suggest that, I don't know what options Goldberg has because if he walks out, he's just walked out out, out, of, out of the wrestling business. Um, so, and, and maybe he just doesn't want to be in the wrestling business. He's still got, you know, he's got a couple of years left on a contract for a million and a half. He's got enough money. He plays his cards right. He does, you know, he can walk. He can walk away. He doesn't love wrestling. You know, I mean, very few people have walked away. I mean, nobody has. I mean, guess Bret Hart sort of did, but he was forced medically to do so. Right. Um, you know, but maybe Goldberg will just walk away. Or and and and, and if he does, now the only problem with that is is that Vince will own a contract on him for two and a half, three years, and by that time everyone will have forgotten who he is. Sort of do a restart of a new company with Bill Goldberg as your centerpiece in like three years. It just it just won't mean anything. It it, it really doesn't even mean that much now. But I mean, I think it's a name that you need. Right. You don't think that uh, the Vince would just cut him loose along with everybody else, figuring, you know, what the hell? There's no point in keeping him. Fire if, him. If, he, if he's if he's not going to cooperate, there's no point in keeping him. Oh, he'll fire him. <laughs> okay, if he fires him though, then the guy then the guy could be the cornerstone of a startup. Right. And he, he, and he may fire him, but the, the nature of the firing may be that Time Warner still has to pay his contract, and, and if that's the case, um, you know, then and I, I don't know. There's there's a lot of complications in that one. How that one can work out, I don't know. I mean, that's pretty much. You need a lot of lawyers to sort that one out. Uh, you know how how the that, that would happen if all those things happen, like you said. Right. And they, they, so so I don't know. Yeah, and also looking at uh, the comments that uh, Jamie Kellner has made about uh, you know outside of wrestling, but also about uh, Buffy and whatnot. It's nice to see that uh, uh, mentally challenged orangutans still have a place in in Hollywood. Uh, making decisions. It's, it's all it's all ego and decisions, and the guy on top just makes you know. I mean. Wrestling's got, I tell you, wrestling's got a really bad image, and it's 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 probably it's probably unfair. But then let me tell you something: when when you get a television executive in the world that they live in, okay, and they see that thing that Trish Stratus did with Vince McMahon, just as an example, and there's others, and they happen all the time on wrestling, and they look at that and peep in and go, "Oh my God, look at those fans." It confirms those fears of what wrestling fans are. Right. And unfortunately, that stigmatizes all of us, and, and, and it's it's and, and, and it's an unfair stigma, stigma. But we all get it, and that's one of the reasons why that wrestling is having so much trouble. That's why Paul couldn't get new TV. Uh, that's why W why Fusion you know isn't going to be able to. I, I mean, maybe they'll make the deal. I shouldn't say they won't be able to make the deal, but it makes it much much harder to make the deal. That's why USA will not negotiate with these guys. Um, you know, I mean, they, they turned him down flat, even though USA made tons of money with wrestling over the years, because it was like, you know, what did Barry Diller say? It was like, you know, these the, horrible... The, the pimply-faced, uh, you know, angry white male, basically. <laughs> Something exactly. like that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, I think that, that maybe the that interview with, uh, with Costas that Vince did could have been the most ill-timed event to take place. You know the the way it did because it just it, it brought in a whole an audience that hasn't been that maybe hasn't been exposed to wrestling, and then they see, you know, the 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 clips of the of the Trish Stratus deal, and then you know they walk away with that negative opinion and then just ruin the whole thing. Well, I'll tell you what. Because I put absolutely nothing past Vince, there will always be a part of me that thinks maybe that's why Vince did what he did. You know, no. I was actually thinking that myself. No, 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 no. But I'll tell you something, the, um, uh, the, the, the behavior of Vince did more damage than any of those clips. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, guys, well, uh, you, you got a great show, and I uh, look forward to hearing, uh, to hearing the show. But uh, take care. Okay. Al, any more calls, or should we wrap up? Let's go to Dan in Chicago. Dan, what's going on? Gentlemen, how you doing, yes. guys doing tonight? Hey. We're doing really good. Uh, interesting stuff going on in the news with WCW, huh? Hey, I, I, I watched um, Raw, and I, of course, switched back and forth. Um, my comment on Raw is, it was, you know, it was a very good show. But what I wanted to ask you guys a long time ago was, why is SmackDown a little, a little, a little bit better than Raw? Because it's taped. It's and taped. they have a chance to, whole to reason? just look it I was, up. My thought yeah. was because everybody doesn't have TNN. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, no, 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 no. Better ratings? I mean, yeah. Well, no, I'm saying it as a quality show. As no, 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 because... It's a quality it, show, because I've always thought that SmackDown was a it's quality on, show. A better quality show than Raw. Yeah, it, it, well, it has been, but I think it's just that it's taped, and also, 
Uh, maybe you know different set and things like that. Oh, and overall, I've liked SmackDown more than Raw. Yeah. Because if something's really bad that happens on SmackDown, we just don't have to see it on TV. Whereas yeah, if it's bad it on out. Raw, yeah, we're going to see it because it's live. Okay. All right. And uh, my comment on uh, Nitro for next week, uh, do you think Hogan will be there? I hope not. You, um, well, who, who knows? And I, like I said, I've uh, watched, I haven't said it, but I'll tell you guys now, that I watched tapes from 90... Seven on Nitro, boy, what happened in Nitro from '97 till now? I mean, it's just pathetic. It's just they pathetic. The, I mean, they didn't elevate new talent. I know. They thought that the good times would last forever. Nothing in wrestling is forever. It's the same thing that's happened to every super wrestling organization in the past. They didn't create new talent. Right. All of a sudden, I mean, even if, they, if they're great workers and provide a good product, people get tired of the same matches over and over again unless you're constantly, the lifeblood of this business is constantly mixing new blood in with the old blood. And yeah. when you fail to let the new blood rise to the top, you, it can go down and look at, and, and I mean, this is a... This is a look at how fast it went down. Right. It's a fad business. It can go down really... Look at WWF in 1992. It, yeah. fell, it, it, fell, so, it fell 40% in one year. Yeah, I mean, I so, like I, I will always, you know, be behind WCW, and I like the internet stuff, and I like the guys on the internet. But I mean, it's pretty bad when you like the wrestling because of the internet people. You know what I'm saying? I like Bob Ryder and Borash. They're cool. They're cool guys. That's what kind of gets me into the show. But then when mm-hmm. you watch the show, it's like, uh, you know. Yeah, we got to get running right now. All right, now, guys, I'm sorry we are about totally that. Totally out of time. Um, I want to remind everyone we're going to Mike Mooneyham, Charleston Post Courier, who's been around. WCW from the beginning and the Crockett's watching Crockett's, which is the predecessor of WCW, longer than any man alive. <laughs> and we'll be talking to him about all of this and taking your phone calls. We're just getting flooded with phone calls and emails, so it's awesome. And it's a very exciting time. Fortunately, it's not a very great time, but it's an exciting time. Um, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow at 5.